У вас есть 20 секунд, чтобы ознакомиться с заданием. Now we are ready to start. Speaker A. Nowadays, more and more companies show their products on the internet. So if there's anything I need, I can see where to get it and what it will cost without leaving home. I can also compare prices, which helps me to save money. Besides, I can buy the things I need online and they will be delivered to me, which saves me a lot of time. Speaker B With the help of the internet, I can chat with different people from different countries, learn more and more about our world, different lifestyles and thinking. The internet offers a place where we can communicate with each other. By exchanging ideas, learning other people's customs and traditions, we get to know people from all over the world and how our life compares to other people's lives in other countries. Speaker C I work all by myself doing translations. I find contacts on the web by publishing my advertisement on different internet sites. Then I get texts from customers by email and return the completed translation to them. And when doing translations, I use all kinds of online dictionaries. I also get paid through the internet, so it saves me a lot of time. Speaker D There is a lot of information and things on the internet, but many of them can hurt other people easily. The internet has a risk of receiving spy programs or viruses which can damage your computer. Moreover, you can meet bad people when chatting. According to crime statistics, there have been many people who suffered because of chatting to people they didn't know. Speaker E I used to chat on the internet because I wanted to improve my English. Then I started to write in forums because I think that there you can get to know very intelligent people and share your interests. From my research, I think the best way to learn English over the internet is to chat online. You can also find some tests on the internet and check your progress. Speaker F The internet has a wide variety of information, such as data, pictures, graphs, film or book reviews and such like. For example... Instead of going to a library, you can search the internet at home and find information for a report, an essay or anything you need in no time. Also, the internet has lots of news from all over the world, so it's easy to find out what's going on. So, it is very helpful for people of different age groups. You have 15 seconds to complete the task. Задание A1, A7 Вы услышите разговор двух молодых людей. Определите, какие из приведенных утверждений A1, A7 соответствуют содержанию текста 1, true, какие не соответствуют 2, false и о чем в тексте не сказано, то есть на основании текста Нельзя дать ни положительного, ни отрицательного ответа. 3. Not stated. Обведите номер выбранного вами варианта ответа. Вы услышите запись дважды. У вас есть 20 секунд, чтобы ознакомиться с заданиями.
Now we are ready to start. Hey, Jeff, this is a very nice room. Hmm, it's comfortable and cosy. It's in Japanese style. I like it. It's got the tatami mat and some beautiful vases. Oh, you have a pretty small kitchen. Do you live alone? Right now, I have a friend of mine staying with me. His name is Mark. He's my childhood friend. Oh, really? Sort of a roommate? Sort of a roommate, yes. Short term. He's staying with me short term, so yes, a roommate. OK. a y How's that going? Ah,、uh, I don't like it. Why? He's lazy, he's messy, he doesn't exercise and eats junk food. And well, you know, Mark contributes nothing to the household budget. He's so careless. Oh, so he lives here and he doesn't cover his living expenses? Well, yeah. But what annoys me most is that he's lazy and he doesn't do much all day. That's got to be pretty irritating. He's a great fellow. He's a good friend of mine. But yeah, he's a disgusting slob. I try to encourage him to do a few things, but he's a tough one. He doesn't want to do anything. Are you going to tell him he has to move out?、Uh, no, he's a smart man. He knows the deal. He knows what's going on. And I think he's.、Uh, yeah, I would never ask him to move out because I don't mind having him here, but I'm just going to try to whip him into shape. Oh, so you're just going to try to change him so he becomes a better roommate? I'm going to try to, yeah, try to get him a better schedule, a better schedule. Yeah, like exercise and eating right and smoking less and watching TV less. Well, what is his schedule? Uh, his schedule is he's like a night owl. When he goes to bed, I go to work. He stays up most of the night watching TV. And then he sleeps most of the day recovering. And then when he gets up, he has a headache. He's a bit sluggish and slow. It's not a healthy option. Actually, I would like him to take up some kind of sport or sports games. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like it's going to happen. Good luck. Thanks. I'll probably need it. You have 15 seconds to complete the task. Задание A8 A14. Вы услышите интервью. В заданиях A8 A14 обведите цифру 1, 2 или 3, соответствующую выбранному вами варианту ответа. Вы услышите запись дважды. У вас есть 50 секунд, чтобы ознакомиться с заданиями. Now we are ready to start. Here we are then from Radio One, and in a corridor with Spin, a pop star. Hello. Spin, is this your name then? No, it's not. It's just that most people think that Crispin is too embarrassing to call me. They call me Spin because it's the only kind of cool abbreviation that you can make from a terrible name like Crispin. Fine. It's not my fault, you know. It's my parents. From a very early age, when they called me it, I would cry for months in my cot, and they didn't know why, because I couldn't explain that it was because they'd named me Crispin. But then I got it out of my system. It could have been worse. I could have been called Daryl. Where did you study? Yeah, my parents said over and over again that university could improve my chances of career development. So I went to Sheffield. 
I did philosophy and theology, but I dropped out after two years. I took a year off to get into pop music, and I always thought I might go back, but I'd never enjoyed school, and I used to get into a real panic before the exams. In fact, even now I feel nervous about all this stuff, and the idea of going back never happened. No, I don't really like universities as places, to be honest. They give me the creeps. What were you like then when you first went to college? You know, I was 18 and I was into this kind of communist thing. And I thought I was a real communist, but it never occurred to me to join the Communist Party. We got a house of our own, and we were the only people in the whole of Sheffield University to have a house of our own, so it became like a commune, and we were like members of some secret society. In fact, our secret life was rather innocent. You know, everyone would come around and there'd be 20 or 30 people there having parties. Have you learned much in this last year? Because, you know, you've just grown and people's respect for you has grown so much in the last year. We were pretty much ignored last year and then it started changing for our people all of a sudden this year. I think it's because everyone's kind of revived themselves. We brought back to life some forgotten ideas and we also got interested in folk music. I think we're doing something new now. Our work is really creative and rewarding. This is the greatest satisfaction of my life. I've met many people, some of whom have been an inspiration to me. That really is Hollywood. It turns into a film. It's just like a fantasy world. Have you written any new songs then? Is there an album coming out? There is. I've got a kind of library of ideas, but the problem is that I have to be on my own. It's like, you know, when you're a little kid and you're playing in the corner of the living room with your cars or whatever. You're in the middle of this fantasy, and the moment you notice your mum saying, Ah, oh, how sweet, and looking at you, the magic charm disappears instantly. But I've increased this library, and I'm going to leave in December. I'm going to rent a cottage in the middle of nowhere and work really hard. You're one of the few pop stars that we never hear talking about cars or your bank account. What do you do with your money? Better yet, what's the first expensive thing you bought? The first expensive thing that I bought was a house. What was it like owning your first home? At the time I bought it, I had no idea how famous I really was. It was across the street from a school and we had kids coming across all day knocking on the door. It was crazy. The house was on a main road. It was a busy road full of cars. But that didn't bother me. The problem was the people around. Sometimes, when I went out, I had to cover up most of my face. So we put an end to all these problems, sold the house, lost a part of money and bought a new house. That's probably the best investment I've made, my new house. It all sounds as though you don't like your fame and your fans. Why? Music fans are among the most reasonable groups of people in the whole world. Sounds great. Do you mean that fans going wild at the concerts are perfectly reasonable? You know, I don't like people to go wild, but I'm sure that keeping feelings of irritation and annoyance bottled up is a really bad idea. For starters, where would you find a bottle big enough to contain the oceans of anger created by someone calling your favourite band rubbish? or good dinner party music. If you leave all that stuff inside, you're asking for headaches and other health problems. So, let your emotions out. You have 15 seconds to complete the task.